All right. Thank you all again for joining us today. Today is January the 16th, uh, 2021, and you're with the International Association of Woodcarvers, where woodcarvers are helping woodcarvers during this pandemic. Uh, today on our meeting, we have a special guest from the Monona Historical Society. We've got Rick Bartles on. Uh, he's going to be talking to us about uh, hand carved wooden chains. Um, there at the Historical Society, they've set a uh, Guinness's Book of World Records with the uh, most wooden carved chains in one location. Uh, so we'll be hearing from Ricky here in just a few minutes. I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that are coming up on our schedule. Uh, next weekend, we've got Mr. John Overby on. He's going to be talking about flat plane carving. Uh, that'll be on the 23rd. Uh, Sean Mullenbelt from uh, 51 Bravo Knives is going to be coming on on the 30th and talking to us about hand forging carving knives. Uh, so there's another knife maker that's going to be coming on and talking to us. On February the 6th, we got Claws Creations that's going to be coming on with us. Uh, they're going to be talking about hand carved bowls, knives, spoons, and shrink pots. Uh, you can look them up on Instagram as uh, uh, their tag number is, or their tag name is Claws Creation. Uh, and then on the 13th of February, uh, we just signed up Janet Cordell that's going to be coming on and she's going to be doing a demonstration for us. So if any of you all know Janet's work, uh, she's a fantastic carver. She's been carving for quite a long time uh, and she's agreed to come on and do a demonstration with us. So uh, we look forward to that. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about some classes that are coming up. Uh, Dave Stetson is going to be doing a class in February on a dancing fiddler. Uh, Kevin Applegate's doing an Iron Mike caricature carving class. Janet Cordell's doing a grizzly bear class. And then ongoing classes, Al Lacoste is continuing to do cottonwood bark classes. And Chris Hammock's doing design and caricature classes. So if you're interested in any of those classes that are coming up, I highly encourage you to reach out to those folks. Uh, try to sign up for those uh, before they get full. And uh, it'll be very valuable. We, we've talked in some of the classes about how much information you're able to gain uh, through these Zoom classes as compared to classes that you do in person because you can see everything that the instructor is doing. Uh, you can also go back and rewatch the video. So if you miss something, um, you can go back and watch it. Whereas in the live class, if you miss it, you just miss it. So uh, take advantage of these classes while you have the opportunity. Uh, we want to thank Wood Carving uh, Academy which is woodcarvingacademy.com for all of their support. Uh, you can go out and see upcoming classes on their page. Um, and uh, any of the videos that are available, you can sign up for subscriptions there so that you can go out and watch those classes. And we also wanna thank Chipping Away for their support. Um, they donated some uh, gift cards in the past and they plan on doing that for us again in the future. So look forward to that. Uh, so having said all of that stuff, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to Rick Bartles at the Monona Historical Society uh, to talk about um, wooden chain carving. He's going to do a little demonstration or kind of walk us through how they uh, car carve those chains. And uh, feel free to ask questions if you have any questions about uh, any of the chains that he has behind him or any of the information that he's sharing. He's, uh, he's open to answering questions, so feel free to do that. Uh, Rick, we appreciate you joining us, and uh, go ahead and turn it over to you. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity to do this today. I, my name is Rick Bartles. I live in Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, and I'm at the Monona, Iowa Woodcarver Historical Society Museum. And the website here to get a hold of people is Monona, what, Monona uh, Museum com. Monona Museum com. I'll get it straight here. Um, I started carving here when I was about 15 years old, somewhere in that area. And in order for me to start when I wanted to carve was after all the work was done on the farm, I ended up having to clear the kitchen table off so I could from the evening meals in order to do my carving. So my mother really appreciated that. But anyway, here at the museum, there is over 285 chains located around all around me here. This one here of the flag here, this has got 1,380 pieces of chain in this particular one. This chain here is made out of one piece of wood and it's 18 different chains that are hooked together around that one piece of wood. Uh, some of the chains that are here 
This one here, in between each link, there's a ball in between the chain on this particular one here. So we got another one here that's even a little bit interest. This one is a double link. As you can see, it's got two links for each link on there. I've got a helper here that's handing me these chains. This chain here, it's kind of hard to figure out. This is a double chain. So you got a normal chain inside a normal chain as they work it along. This, this particular chain here um, is a twisted link style of chain. And you can see there's like six different twists on these things here. This was made out of a broom handle. It's kind of long, so I got to help, help here holding this up and showing how this thing works. You can see the who carved all these chains. Did you carve most of them? All these chains were carved by Elmer Martin Sr. And he carved all these chains over he carved over 500 of them all together. Show the little one. Okay. And they vary in size, as you can tell. So the normal chain, let's go with the big chain to start with. We'll go for size of chain. This particular chain here is carved out of a cedar four by four piece. So it's a fairly large chain. Normal size chain, you know, on a mortar is just a simple, this one here, just a short little chain. And this one here is made out of oak. Now, if you want to go a little bit smaller, these links here are roughly about, oh, they're about three eighths of an inch long in each one of these links here. So it's a very short, tiny chain. So now here is a normal pencil chain here. This pencil here, when you, years ago, they used to send chain letters out where you had to write back and send all that stuff back. Well, here's a pencil that you can use to sign back for your chain letters. Now, if you get really challenging, now you see this here, this one here is hard for me to hold. So I'm gonna be very, very careful on this one here. If anybody got an idea what that is, see how the tip down here, the bottom is kind of red shape. This was a matchstick at one time. And again, if that is not challenging, sorry about bumping the camera there. If that is not challenging enough for you, here is a toothpick that was carved into a chain. Now the toothpicks here, I'm thinking there's several of these toothpick chains around this institution here, so. Uh, Rick, how many different types of wood uh, are carved there? There is over 80 different types of wood that they use to carve these chains out of. So you can use any really type that you want. Um, we got another little toy here. This, this is here is for the people that like to do big stuff. So here, I don't know if we can see it very well. Here's a chain, chainsaw. Now we've been trying to figure out how to sharpen this thing up. So it, it actually is very sharp to get it sharp so it's usable. Now, we got one more here. This is for those that are really in, inventive. We're trying to figure out how to get this to work a little bit better. There you go, thank you. 
this one here is a chain maker. So you just turn the crank and out comes the chain. So that's an easiest way to do it there. So now we can go on to one, uh, towards the end of the video, if you would like, I will do a panoramic view of this thing so you can kind of see the whole room and a lot of the different carvings that are around this place here. But let's start out with the basic chain, which which would be this, this basic style of chain here. So to start with, to do that chain, you want to switch it to the, switch down to the other camera or is it that working? There we go. So to start with another, with a regular chain, he's gone, it's his now. Um, we start with a square piece of wood. This piece is about a foot long. I suggest somewhere around a foot and a half to three foot for a starter, just to get your feet wet on carving chains. So the first thing we got to do is cut out these corners. Now I'm going to take and set this aside and I'm going to go with this little short piece here. So consider this here, this short piece here, if we turn it up on the end. So I've got basically this on the end, but it's easier for me to draw this way. So what I'm going to do is on this one that it's about a two inch square, I'm going to go over about five eighths of an inch and make a cut down like this. And then I'm going to make another cut down like this at about five eighths of an inch. And I'm going to remove this part gets removed. And I'm going to do that on all four corners. So we get all four of these out the full length of this piece. So all these corners will be gone. And the way for me to do that is I set up a table saw. And let's say this here, the, my pen here is the blade and this is the rip fence. So I set my rip fence at the five eighths and I'll take this piece and I'll slide it along like this over the saw. Then I will turn it 90 degrees and cut again, turn it 90 degrees, cut again, turn it 90 degrees, cut again. So now I got four of my cuts done on the side here. Then I take this block and I'll take the whole block and I'll switch it in for in. So what I, the end that I started with is back here rather than in front, do the same thing. Cut, turn, cut, turn, cut, turn. And when I'm done with all that, I end up with a board similar to this to start out my chain carving. The next step is to do design your links. I come up with this real expensive, hard to come by guide here. It's made out of a ice cream box, cereal box or something like that. This particular guide is four inches long, one into the other. And I have got a two inch mark here in the center on that. And my piece of wood here is roughly two inches across both ways. I think to make the chain aesthetically nice, you want the lengths about twice as long as its width. But again, that's up to, that's personal taste on that. So what I do is I start at one end, hold the guide down and I take my pencil and mark here at the two inch line here and I mark here at the four inch line. And I do again, I move over here, mark on my two inch line, and then mark at my four inch line. Okay. And continue on to the whole length of your piece. Now, our first link, we go just a little bit short of this. So I got a little gap, and I'll draw a line like this to make my first link. And I can do the same thing to match it up around here, like that. And I'll do a little bit of short to that go around that way. And this one here, you know, we'll have those there. So you can see that there is my first link. And then to go the opposite link, I will take this one here and go this way. And I will go this one here, just a little short of that mark. 
and go this way. And then on the other side of that mark, go that way. Okay, on this mark here, go this way. And we can go again over here. I can go again over here. So now you can see this link here showing up and this link here. And you can see this link here. I could also mark it over here. So now I've got one, two, three links already drawn out here. The next step, so it would look when it's completed like this link here, you have the red ones there and the blue ones here. Now notice I've already cut this area out because I didn't need that on this side. And you'll see that I have an area in here on these that I need to hollow out. And I'll have the same thing on these links that I need to hollow out. This one here, you gotta hollow this whole part here out. And then you have to cut this area out in between. I don't know, hopefully I'm not going too fast on this here. I guess I don't need that board here anymore. So, one thing I gotta switch over here to the first, one of the things to get this out here, get this area out here, I'll take a saw, just a hand, little hand saw, and I will guide it with my finger and I will cut in like this here to get down there. So I switch over this one here to show you because you don't need to sit there and watch me saw it, but this one here is carved all the way down on both sides. Then I take this little skew like this and they do make hammers for this, which is probably better than using your hand, but I can just do it with a hand oh. and out they come with a sharp little pop of the hand. I'm trying to make sure that they can see it on the... So those come out like that. One of the things, once you get these out, another option for you is you can drill a hole through here with a drill bit. And you can take this coping saw or fret saw, they call it, put it through this hole here and you can cut all of this area here out with one shot. So then that's all cut out and it's, you can easily work. You save a lot of time then carving this out by hand. And the next thing, but if you're not doing it that way, if you're not doing that, the next thing you gotta do is to carve these gaps along the side here. You can see this one here, I've already got carved along here. But in order for me to do that for this link here, what I gotta do is I take this knife and I'll go straight in alongside this link, straight down along there of that nature there. So I'm starting giving it enough room for that link, this link to go through here, from here. And I'm gonna go right along there and cut down. Now, the next part, which is a little bit difficult for, I had a hard time with knives on this one, is I end up cutting this way here and you start out at an angle like this and I'm at a very sharp angle and I'll go down like this and I'll cut a piece out. And I'll keep working this piece out. Keep going back and forth from this way to this way. Now, I'm using a deep wood venture knife. And the reason I switched to this one on this particular cut is because you can see the back of this spine is very thick. It's a very solid, very sturdy knife. And what happens when I get going down here farther, I'm cutting and I'm cutting across like this and I've got to turn it. And when I turned it a few times, and you can see the little pieces coming out and you got to kind of dig it out a little bit once in a while because it doesn't come out easy to get these pieces out of there. What happened to me a couple times is I sat there and broke the blade in two. I broke one blade right down through the center. It was, it was a flex cut blade like this. The same thing because I thought that 
detail knife would be great to get down in there and work with it, but I broke it off. The nice part about it, I packed up the piece and the, the knife, I sent a note and told FlexCut what I was doing. And two weeks later, I had a brand new knife sitting in the mail. So they stand behind their product very well. After I get that done, and you can see on this side here, I've got this one done. I don't know if we're gonna be able to show it through there, but this cut has to go all the way through. There. I don't know if you can see my knife sticking out there on the other side. So that cut has to go all the way through. I can go down so far on this side, but now I can go about halfway. I can flip it over and I can do the other same thing on the other side to kind of make it a little easier than going all the way through. The one chain that I got in a bag over here is 51 feet long. So what I had there was I had a chain set up like this and I had another row of chain right here beside it and then another one and then another one. So I had four rows of it right side by side. So when I was doing this cut to go through here, I couldn't get through on this side. So I had to cut it off on one side. So that caused me a lot of issues getting that accomplished. Um, one, the next part, okay, I've got this one cut out. I got a few cuts on this one here. So you go through that. I'd use this, get back to my good, this knife here. Next thing you gotta do is cut this part here out in the center. So I go in here like this and cut off the side in and cut. These are, I found that these are very, they're a good test for how good your knife is by the time you do this. But this you can also do from both sides, which helps out tremendously. After that is done, we're gonna switch over to the other end here. So like I said, there's no sense to you watching me trying to make a few chips out of this. This one here you can see has this side all cut out and you can see that this side is all cut out and it's all cut out on this way here. These are past the center and you can see this link here is kind of round, rounded here and it's rounded on this side. You can see where it's going through. I went and rounded this edge here off and this edge here off so that when I free this link up, it'll turn off the side. This area in here, I end up having to turn the knife and carve in this method here. And this is also is hard on the blade tips and stuff like that, keeping your knife sharp with the turning inside curve like that to get them. That gets it nice and smooth on the inside. The next step, and I'm going to use this knife here for this one here, is to get down in here. Now this link is going in an angle like this on this side, so you can see the angle, and then it'll be going like this on this side here, while this one up here is going this way and this way. So we got four different angles we're trying to work with. So in order to break that loose, I go in here at an angle to match this one, but I'm also cutting at an angle like this, this way. So I'm cutting at two, uh, multiple, two different angles at the same time, get that's possible. And you wanna take this side here, oh, I gotta get the right one here. Go here, and then your knife will go all the way down around here. To go through and now I got this side all cleaned up. So I got two of these already done. Next thing I got to do is I just got to clean this couple one here. So I'll take this blade and basically I'm just going back and forth and redoing the same cut, but I'm going just a, oh, just a 16th or a 32nd off to the side from each other. And you can start seeing little, little chips come out of there kind of like sawdust on there. And you want to make sure you get it so it starts from here and will go down. You see how my knife was flat like this and I got here 
and then I could turn it and wiggle it and get it down. I say it's this is a good way to test to see if you can break a knife or not. Because <laughs> these are good at that. So does anybody have any questions so far or anything that you got coming up that you're thinking about while I free this link up? Because that's I'm gonna try and Ricky. get this. Yes. Yes, yeah, stand slow, Ricky. I'm just curious. Um, I noticed you used a table saw and then you used a hand saw. What about in the olden days when they didn't have a table saw? Well, this this edge like this, this corner here, you can take that out by hand. Yeah. It just takes longer. Um, yeah, I'm just, I was just curious of, to, to try and figure out in my head just exactly how they did it. Yeah, they, they would just use this. Uh, you could use a, a plane too would probably do that if you set it up right. Yeah, that's true too. It, it would be a real challenge though. Yes, yes, that would be interesting to do that. You Thank see you. It's, can you see it's wiggling a little bit too already? Oh yeah. Okay, so now I got to do one more corner. I had two of, I had two of them out in here, cut off a little bit. So these angles are the angles are to help you come up with a roundish colored, roundish shaped link on the end here. And what I find out is if I don't go like this way here to go down in there, sometimes I end up not cutting it right here in the corner or, or and then what happens when I pull it loose is I break a chip off right up in here and then your link has got to be a lot narrower in order to make it out and as you notice these links are kind of wide one of the reasons I leave them a little bit wide is because when I did that saw cut down through here I ended up cutting this link here a little bit so in order to make this link good I'm going to have to cut this down a little bit to get rid of those saw marks there. All right, back to getting this one loose here. There we go. Now, see, I didn't round that off enough, and they usually come out like this a little bit rough at first. And these detailed knives that are not very wide work the best for getting, getting this clean. You hear it scraping and because I'm turning kind of against it and it does they don't like to do that very well. Get this a little bit rounded off here. When you get it rounded off, they go a lot better around that corner there. As you can tell, they, they don't turn real good at first. You gotta work at getting them cleaned up a little bit. See, here's one of the areas you can see that I got didn't get quite well enough and I with my cutting apart, so I got it chipped out in here a little bit. If that's showing up there very well. Great. Do you ever use gouges to clean it up after you've uh, separated them like that? I have not used the gouges on this. But that's not saying that I can't be using a gouge. It would probably work pretty better than what I'm doing here this way. There we go, a little bit better. And now I can get in the end of this one here and clean this one here up. You see it, um, they don't look very crisp and clean in there at first. So you gotta clean them up to make it look a little nicer and, so that the chain link moves better to each other. This is kind of different and new for me, carving while I'm on television. How that sounds? Or I should say on people's iPads and computer screens. usually watch other instructors carve and they show me how to do it rather than me be the instructor. You can tell uh, it doesn't- All the chains that you've carved, do you prefer basswood or are there other woods that you would rather carve a chain out of? 
Um, basswood is always nice because of the ease of carving that it is. That's always an advantage of that way. Um, the other woods I've carved are oak and walnut and stuff like that. Oak is a very hard wood and stuff like that. The advantage to oak is the fact that you can see these chain lengths are not that much smaller, but I can round this down much smaller and still get the same size, a very strong chain stuff out of it. But the basswood definitely carves better. Um, you don't want to get a, a wood, the type of wood that is very splintery, you know, that, that likes to split, chip off and stuff like that. One of the, so that, I think I went over this, the width of this. Uh, it gives me plenty of room here to straighten these up and make these links a lot prettier when you get done here. The longest chain so far that I've carved, and it's sitting over here in the bag over here. And it started out with a piece of basswood that was 10 foot long and it was eight inches wide. And by the time I got done carving that chain, it was 236 links and 51 feet long. And I thought, well, is that close to the Guinness World Book of Records? And as far as I know, there's a guy in Sweden that does did one that is around 200 and some meters long. So I'm not 100% sure on that. And then I seen one on a YouTube video, and I think his was somewhere around 200 feet long that he carved. And I think that gentleman was from Michigan. So the other thing too is you notice I end up carving in a lot of weird different angles. So keep what bleeds away from the front of the knife. I should have my carving glove on for doing this so that I don't nick myself. Now, the one question about doing it without the saw. One of the other ones that I've done, we're working on here, this is a twisted length. So you can see how the length is in one direction and the other end is about a 90 degree to the other one. So each length is twisted like that. Now this one here, as you can tell, I'm starting with just a square piece of wood. We'll show you a little bit how to lay this one here out. My guide and my blank. So what I would do on this one here, I would again mark my two inch, four inch, two inch, four inch, get up here to where and I would go, you want to draw them straighter than what I am, obviously, and go all the way around here with your marks at two and four. So now that I got a mark like that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the 5 8 circle roughly right up in here. And this is going to be where this end of that length is going down, straight down like that. That's where this one is going to line up. There. So then I go over here 90 degrees onto this one here. And I'm going just short of that line and I'm drawing another circle there. And that would be the other end of the chain length, like that. So then I got to draw a line from here to cross over to end up to here. And hopefully that's that's showing up. So now you can see the link going across there like that. And you do the same thing on here on the basically opposite it and go across of this nature. To get to that point. Now for my second link, 
since this is, we got to go halfway between this point and this point, and that's going to end up right about here. So we go here on this corner is where we're going to start for our second length. And we're going to go down to this corner over here. Actually, what I need to do is go on this side of this corner and go on this side of this corner. So I'll draw that link that comes across and it'll go down here like this. And the same thing on the opposite side. And now we start our next one. <coughs> Excuse me. Which it seems to go around here. I got to start here. They don't seem to stay in the same spot. They got to go a different spot. I'm just below that line and I'm going over to here and I'm going to be going along like this. Or did I go too far? No, well, that should be right. So now basically I've got my first link here drew out my second link drawn out here, and then my third link drawn out. And now this one here, you've got to carve all this areas out between these links to end up with this. All right, anything else we got to come up with here? Hey Ricky, how would you set up the ball in the cage chain? The ball in the cage chain. Uh, just a second here. I will get a ball in the cage chain blank here. So this one here, we got it marked out. So this is going to be the ball. They're going to put the ball inside here. And this is going to be the chain link. He's taken out. These are the corners. Very same way as these here, corner lengths here taken out. So you take these corners all out and you would draw your lengths here and here would be your length and here would be the ball set up inside of them. This is one of uh, Elmer Martin Sr.'s uh, one that he was getting ready to carve. And this one looks like it's out of uh, cedar, like aromatic cedar. He's even got X's put on there for each one of them. So he, he, he marked it out to where it was going to be. Now we've got one more stick over here. And I would truly love to tell you how he sets this one up. But if you remember the picture of the broomstick that we did, those that twisted link, this is his setup on that twisted link one that he's working on. So this would take a lot more ex explanation and I am not really knowledgeable enough to explain this one yet because I still haven't totally figured it out. So I know he uses a, a paper. You can see it's kind of a spiral all the way up each one of them. All right. Do we have any more questions out there that it can think of? Would Rick, you, like you talked about you talked about using a wider piece of board, and I know the other day when when you and I talked, um, you showed how you laid out a chain with a wide board, and how you kind of went back and forth to set it up. Can you show us that? The wide board. Um, what I did with the wide board is. I ended up setting it up similar like this. So I ended up with four of them right side by side like this. And actually what I used for my, when I did my long one was I used a router bit to cut these grooves out on it. And then when you get to the end here, what you end up having to do is carve a length that goes between them. So you would have a link that comes up here and goes over down through this one here and back. So then you could start back up the next row and do the same on the other end. 
and go zigzag back and forth. And that's how you, that's how I got this really, 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 I don't know if you're seeing, there we go. Now I got it on the camera again. <laughs> This is that 51 foot long thing. Keeps going and going. <laughs> hey, I guess I got it pretty close to the middle. I didn't realize I picked it up pretty close to the middle. There's one end. And there's the other end of that chain. Were you able to figure out? Were you able to figure out just exactly how long it took you to do that? It it was about three months of carving on it, and I, there was times I would carve six or eight hours a day on that particular chain. Each, That's each, amazing. Yeah, each link took me approximately an hour and a half to two and a half hours to do. The ones where I'm jumping from one row to the other. Those are the ones that took a lot longer time to do. That's because they were, uh, you're going to have a grain problem there? Yeah, you do have the grain problem there, yes. I needed a drink. <clears throat> Can I switch back up to the other camera there for a second? There we go. So we got this chain here behind me here. This one here is, there's 18 different chains in this. And what he's done on this one here is he's taken a board and the board goes out this way and out this way. And these chains are all hooked onto that one board, one right beside the other one and they go both directions off to that board. So just the same way as I did this other one where I zigzagged it, this one here just stops here in the center and then hangs down from all different sides. So. Now there's also, I say there's 285 different chains here. There is chains here that have multiple balls in it. There is a lot of, there's chains with that twisted link in it. There's one chain here that starts out with the links that are about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch long on one end. And they are big lengths like these or bigger at the other end, so they varied in the size. Um, some of the links here, have all kinds of different woods, the 80 different woods he's used. Tremendous amount of assortment here. And um, this museum is open usually every day of the week in the afternoon for tours. And it's usually one to four in the afternoon. Uh, Elmer, the son of the, the carver, he's the one that a lot of times will give you the tour of this place. Um, would you like me to do a panoramic view of this place? Yeah, go ahead, Ricky. Okay, I got to unplug it here and I'm going to try my best not to jiggle this camera too much. So you see there are some of the other carvings that we do have done. This is the wood carving room where we actually do our wood carving. The group gets together. And I'm trying to sit in my chair and not wiggle it too much here. And you can see that case there is full of pliers and balls and cages and things of that nature. There's animal carvings here throughout. There's some canes and things of that nature here. There's another case that's got all kinds of little bitty chains and stuff in there. There's glass display cases. To stand up here to get my last little bit around here. And there, we're coming back around to the flag here again. And stuff like that. There's stuff above them that you could look at and see. 
tremendous amount of different. These are some of the other carvings that the, uh, the rest of the wood carving group has done throughout the years. I'm gonna put it back down here at my spot. All right. Anything we else? Had a, uh, we had a message in the chat there, Rick. Uh, somebody wants to know if you stain any of the chains or what is your finishing technique on the chain? Okay, these chains that are in this room here are basically finished with lacquer. The different colors that you're seeing is because of the different woods that have been used. Um, I'm finding out, I think the best way that real long one is unfinished yet. Um, what I plan on doing is using a tongue oil on it so that it soaks in very well into the chain. But I don't want to use something that's going to that's going to stick these links together so they don't move very well. Uh, that staining, you could stain them any color you want if you, that's what you're looking for. Um, somebody said to use tongue oil and use some um, um, burnt, burnt umber in it. And as long as you use an oil base, an oil base, it should work out. Put a little of that in there, gives you the stain color to make it look more weathered and used. So, another question in the chat uh, Do you usually carve all links in parallel or carve and separate one link at a time? Um, when I was having them all stacked together, that I ended up working on the whole on the end of the board because the board was 10 foot long. So I wanted to shorten the board up so it fit my car easier. Uh, when I chained, carved, uh, where it took it to different places to carve on it. Um, but yeah, I worked down one end of it. I, and the other reason was I thought if I got one end down, I would take it down about two, three feet of that 10 foot. And if I did not start the next group and bring them down with me, I would stop because I was getting tired of it and, and just cut the chain shorter. So, but since I took all four of them down at the same time, it kept me going. And that, that long chain there, a little, what I did on that long chain was I had four lengths left and I decided since uh, it's about 600 miles from here to Mount Rushmore, I thought I would carve my last four chain links at Mount Rushmore. So I sat there and there's an observation thing where they put the quarters in the machine so you can look at Mount Rushmore. And at that point, I sat there and I carved the first link out. And I thought I put carved that first one out and that was for uh, Teddy Roosevelt, I thought. Because Teddy Roosevelt, without Teddy Roosevelt's work, we wouldn't be able to enjoy a national parks that we have and all the museums and things like that that we have today. And then I got rainy and snowy and wasn't very nice. So I picked up my chain and I walked down and I walked an area that was underneath Lincoln. And I carved the next link for Lincoln. And that one there was just because of the turmoil that the United States has been in lately. He was president when the country tried to tear, tear itself apart then. We're doing good, we're still together. And then I walked a little farther and there's a spot I could get off the main trail a little bit and I sat in a rock there. And that was underneath Washington and Jefferson. And that's where I separated my last two links there. And while I was separating those two links, a couple, a young family from Texas stopped by. And the young lad was probably in that eight to 10 range and the, his sister was a little older and they were both interested in carving. So they sat there with me and they listened to what I had to say about carving and how to get them started and things like that while I separated that last link. And I actually have pictures of them holding up this long chain for me. So I help hopefully help those two young carvers to become better carvers in the coming future. So. Anything else we got? Rick, I have a question uh, about that pencil chain. Is the lead still running down the middle of the chain? As far as I know, yes, it is. Uh, it got put away here. There's three or four of them here. I don't know where you put it. Offhand. It's, oh, it's back in that case over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
that's not attached to me. Yeah, there's. Uh, let's see. There we go. Get the camera angle there. I don't know if you can see it very well. You can see there's lead there in the end of the. The, the lead is still in the pencil. But does it run down where the chain links are too? Yes, because yes, it does because this was a regular pencil. This oh is wow! One that he pulled pulled up off the wherever and carved it out of. Have I carved a matchstick yet? No, I have not, or a pencil. That's still to come. How many people do you have in your group? There is roughly about eight to 10, I'm guessing. We got like three or four different ladies that carve, something like that, and the rest of them. One of them right now, if he got the number right and joined the meeting, he's down in Arizona, one of the snowbirds type of deal. So he's watching from down there, hopefully. Um, we do a various amount of different carvings, Elmer, does his chip carving. That's what he prefers to do the most. And, and again, he's the son of the guy that did these uh, chains here. Uh, we have another gentleman that does a lot of animal carvings. Uh, we've got two newer members that are just starting out, learning how to do some of the carvings. We've got a newer lady that's just starting learning. Um, characters are, there's a lot of character carving done. Um, relief carving we got a few guys that do that from time to time it's not the most popular one but there are some of that some of that going on uh we have some ball and cage people doing stuff like that um uh, let's see incise carving we do some of that um uh, what else about every which different ones we do some lessons we do some watching of videos Speaking of the ball and cage, uh, Doug Linker had that Moravian star. I watched that on the YouTube video. And I was using that because I was teaching young kids at, the, at a library in Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. And I used that because I thought that would be really good to teach them different grains. And it's a fairly simple project to where they could carve it and actually get a finished project to look well. Well, then I took that thing and I thought, you know, I bet you I could put a ball inside that Moravian star. So I sat there and did a, a ball inside the Moravian star. And here about three weeks ago, there was a gentleman on Facebook, I believe it was a gentleman, showed out, showed his Moravian star he did. And I commented on him and says, now you need to put a ball inside of it. So that I put a picture of my they question if you could do that. So then I put a picture of the Moravian star with a ball inside of it. And then afterwards, I got a half a dozen different ones that were putting balls inside of the Moravian stars. So it's amazing how a little here and there pushes people to try something new and different. Anything else we got? I'm kind of running out of things to say. It's crazy. What was the best size for your first carving? I would start with this. Myself, I like this two by two by two with four inch long lengths because it gives you enough room to carve here. Even though, even though this is a little deep to carve in down through here, there's still plenty of room to work with. And it gives you, so now this one here, you can make this link a lot smaller in diameter because I got the material there to work with. Rick, I got a question about a chain link. If you were to make a chain link in a perfect circle, like a continuous circle of chain, how would you do the lot? Like, you know what I mean? The two links on either end? How would you do the lengths on either end? Um, you would just have to shorten it up to where rather than my gauge being a four inch gauge, you do a two inch gauge. 
but you would not be able to you would not be able to do this diameter. Your diameter would have to be smaller considerably. That would the same principle. You just got to make sure that you have enough room in the center to put this link part here down through the hole and this link part of this one down through that hole. And that's where circle ones are actually a little harder to do than what the, um, the oblong ones are. I just got somebody said excellent presentation. Thank you. I'm getting a few messages up on my iPad telling me what I've done or questions. Anything else we got going on? All right, Rick, it looks as though uh, that's probably the end of the question. So I'll go ahead and stop you here. Okay. Um, I, I especially like the tip uh, or, or what you shared about sharing with some of the younger people. And I think that's one of the main reasons uh, that we want to keep this kind of thing going is uh, so that we can keep the art going. Uh, and keep sharing with other people so that they get uh, interested and involved. And I think that's what you're doing there. So I appreciate that. I uh, appreciate you taking the time out to share with us and, and show us what you do. And I would say that you'll probably see a lot of uh, chain carvings pop up on Facebook and Instagram in the coming weeks, because I would say uh, you sparked the interest of a lot of people. So I appreciate that. Um, Want to remind everybody again that next week we'll have John Overby on. He'll be coming on and going through the process that he does to do uh, flat plane carving. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, Sean Mullenbelt will be coming on the week after that to talk about forging uh, carving knives. I know that's a question that some people have had as far as how they can get other carving knives. So Sean's gonna come on and talk to us about that. Uh, and then we have Claus Creation and Janet Cordell starting in February. So um, thank you all for joining us today. We wanted to uh, take just a second to thank all of you who have donated to the Buy Me a Coffee Fund. Uh, again, we're using those funds to, uh, to further this uh, weekly Zoom meeting and to pay for the increase in uh, the uh, number of people that can come on our meeting. So thank you all for doing that. Again, those links will be on the YouTube video in our Instagram page and on our Facebook page. So if you're interested in contributing, feel free to do that. Um, and again, if you, uh, if you like to go out and watch the videos on YouTube, Make sure you subscribe on there and uh, like the videos that we do so that we can generate interest. Uh, it'll just help move us up as far as in the list if somebody searches wood carving. So uh, thank you for doing that. Thank you for joining us today. Again, tune in next week at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, John Everby will be on with us and he'll talk about uh, flat plane carving, flat plane caricature carving. So uh, we will see you all then. Thank you again for joining us today. Excellent.